in the open. Oh. Treasures are always hidden. Oh. Treasures, you cannot see them with your physical eyes. Any treasure that you see in your physical eye is oh. not a great oh. treasure. Oh. Yeah. It now. Anything that you can locate from looking at a man ah, is not a great treasure. Mm -mm. Treasures. Think about it. When God, because this was done by God, formed diamond, he made sure they are hidden far. Far. You have to far. Your life for it. You cannot go and stab on diamond unless it is dropped by a person. But the diamond that has not been touched by the hands of men, only God. You cannot stab on it on the surface. No, 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 no. They are normally hidden under the water somewhere in the middle, in the heart of a rock. Many, many miles away. Precious stones, equally the same. They are hidden in dirty places. For you to get them, you must soil and work very hard to be able to distract and pull out gold. You know, do you see these little rings that we wear? Probably the list of the gold, the dust of gold, and we call them gold rings. And what is the dust of the dust of the dust of gold? Little gold. I, I watch movies. People who mine gold in my brother's country. Congo, Kokoro. Those people go under the water. And those people, you cannot look them twice. They are so dirty, digging for the gold because gold was hidden far away by God. Because God knew it is a precious stone. Anything precious is not on the service. Amen? And that's why they say, not everything that glitter is because that which you can see glittering on, your, on the surface, gold is not, not there. Gold is hidden far. Men and women who have got great treasures, God hides the treasures. And you have to work on them. You have to shape them. You have to work around them. You have to be near them for a long time for you to be able to identify the treasure that is with that, with that man Come on. or women. Jephthah was a man loaded with the treasures of God in you. his heart. Yes, sir. But his own brethren mm. could not see them. Come his on. own family could not see them. Mm. His own people could not see them. Mm. And that's why, because they are seeing the service, because they are shallow. They are shallow. Yes, they were not Come deep on. men. Bible says, deep seeks for the deep. Deep seeks for? A deeper man in God will look for other men who are deep in Too God. Yes, a deeper sir. woman in God will be in the company of mm. other people yes, who sir. are deep in, the, in God. Mm -hmm. Jesus, the son of the living God, uh, was rejected equal uh, by his people. In Bethlehem of Judah, Jesus had no face. He was rejected because the people of Bethlehem of Judah were very shallow people. And because of their shallow mind, and they could not dig deep in the scriptures and in the word of God and in the presence of prayer to recognize that the Savior has been born in the Yamidis and salvation is part of them. They did not recognize that. They lost the very treasure of God given to them. They chased it away. They never looked at it because they were shallow men. Hallelujah. This is the dangers and disasters when you are shallow in God. You, you judge everything from the face value. Come on, glory. To that now. You have no grace to wait. You have no grace to be patient in the presence of God. Because patience is long suffering. Ah, 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 ah. You just see people and you judge them from face value. You lose. The treasure and be left with trash. Oh, oh, keep on. 
or you run for trash and throw the treasure away. Jesus was a gift of God and he was given to the people of Bethlehem yes, of sir. Judah and he was given in a home where there were other sons but it took a very long time and there is evidence in the Bible even for the sons of the home to recognize the same oh my God. Remember, imagine Jesus given by God and he is given to your home every single morning you wake up the person you are having shoulder with is Jesus the person you are sharing a bowl with is Jesus the person who you are sitting on the dining room with is God oh 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 oh, oh. But because of shallowness, you can't know. This is God. Are you hearing? Jesus is just like God the Father. If you have seen Jesus, you have seen God the Father. That is the name of the Lord. Bible says, He said, He who has seen me has seen who? He was born in a home. Because he was wrapped. See, our problem is what is what's wrapped. We, we go for the wrapping more than the stuff that is wrapped. He was wrapped in a body like this one of mine. Praise the name of the Lord. Or the body like that one of yours. And because he was wrapped in that body, an announcement was made. Angels came from heaven above to announce it to the men of Bethlehem and women of Bethlehem and to you. Savior has been born. But because they were looking for, they had a wrong picture of a Savior. They were looking for what is wrapping the Savior. The Savior was wrapped with a body like that one of yours and that one of mine. God walked here on earth. God ate with them. God slept with them. Listen. James, his brothers, and the, and the other brothers that were in that home, they were eating with him the same meal, same food, and they were being taken care of by the same father, same mother, Joseph and Mary, but they never recognized Jesus as Lord. Bible says his brothers only came to know Jesus was Lord after he had died. After he had died. That three years, they never knew who he was. They never really took him serious. They never knew God is in the Yemidist. They never knew heaven has favored them so much that God has opened his heart for them. They never knew. Same thing with Jephthah. Same thing with Jephthah. Simply because he was lapped and born from a woman. Of a prostitute. They had a problem accepting. Watch things that you don't accept. Watch. Watch things that you don't accept. Watch the things that you reject. Watch. Simply because he was born of this woman, they could not accept. They rejected everything about Jephthah. Little did they know Jephthah was their savior. Jephthah was the man of the season that God was about to use. No, there is always a man of the season. Hallelujah. But because of what wrapped Jephthah, they didn't like him that much. And Bible says clearly, they threw him away. Jephthah met other people who are also rejected because yes, the community sir. have a tendency yes, of rejecting mm. the good ones and taking the things that are good because we look things at the face value. Oh, loaded. Come on, preach it. There is no depth in us. There is no depth in prayer. There is no depth in the word. There is no seriousness in trusting God. There is no seriousness in waiting upon the Lord. Bible, the Bible summarizes the book of Judges very well. What was happening then? The last Scripture in the book of Judges, if you can put us there. The very last scripture and arises where the hearts of men and women were. 
in the book of Judges. The last, the last very chapter of the book of Judges. Last verse talks about what was going on. There you go. In those days, Israel had no. Everyone did what so was fit. As he so fit. That's a danger. That is the danger. Mm -hmm. They did not seek the Lord. They had no room for God. What they desired to do is what they used to. And man and his flesh. Adali kwa usarama. Praise the name of the Lord. Everyone did as he saw fit. In other words, they did not consult God. They had no time for God. They have no connection for God. And that's why. Bible says a little bit after. When they had rejected Jephthah and had thrown Jephthah to the land of Tob. And Jephthah was there, and because of the gifting of God in the life of Jephthah, because Jephthah kept himself in God, he did not let rejection define him. He said, I'll continue loving God. I'll continue trusting God. I am not going to go with what my brother says. They want me to see myself as a reject. I am not a reject. I am the beloved of God. God loves me, and God cares for me. And I'll continue to pursue this God. When they reject you, pursue God. When they Hate you pursue God. Continue walking with the God. Your destiny is not defined by man. Your destiny is defined by God. Somebody give God praise. I say your destiny is not defined by the job you do. Your destiny is not defined by your education. Your destiny is not defined by your business. Your destiny is not defined by your family. Your destiny is not defined by your husband. Your destiny is not defined by your children. Your destiny is not defined by your wife. Your destiny is defined by God. And it is in the word of God. And nobody can stop you except God alone. Your destiny is calling you. Your destiny is becoming you. Everyone is called to greet nothing can stop you it is not about the teachers who teach you they don't they don't spell your destiny it is spelled in the word of god and it is god who has called you you are a gift of god and you have got a great and a very bright future ahead of you if you continue pursuing god you have to pursue god he is cutting the last signature of your destiny it is not with men. It is with God. It is not with your bank account. Because sometimes it can be demoralizing when you look at the balances in your account. It will make you shiver and be worried. Will I make it in America? You are, not, you are going to make it in America because America is not about the balance in your account. America is about the God who is behind your life. God will pull you out to victory. Hallelujah. Don't let nobody or anything intimidate you. Even the way that you, where your children are, that should not intimidate you. Because even though your destiny is not defined by what they are doing today, that your destiny is already written by God, and it is sure, and it is done as long as you pursue God. Amen. Oh, come on, child of God. Put those hands together for Jesus. A lot of us, we have been defined by men, and we have, we have, we have started seeing ourselves the way man sees us. Just that refused. And I refuse to be seen the way people see me. You need to refuse to be seen, uh, to see yourself the way people see you. You have to see yourself the way God sees you. The way you are defined by the word of God. This is the true mirror. Any other is false. I say this is the true mirror. Any other is false. What the word of God says about you, that is what is true about you. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. Jephthah had a chance and an opportunity to call his life and say, I am a reject, I cannot become anything. These people hate me, I am not going to try again. I throw out my net, I have given up in life. He had an opportunity to say that, but he chose not to say that. He said, I'll go in the land of top and I'm going to try, I'll fight hard, I'll trust God. Will see me through because my life is defined by God. Don't
Don't let men define you. Don't let situation define you. Don't let illness or diseases define you. You are bigger than that. You are greater than that because Jesus is a resident in your heart. You are just like God. God is unstoppable. Jesus did not let men and women of Bethlehem stop them, stop him. He could have been stopped there and he could not have gone ahead. But he knew, he knew he, who he was. He knew he was from heaven. He knew he had a mission here on earth. And he knew his mission cannot fail. And that's why when he was rejected in Bethlehem, he went to Judea. He went to Samaria. He went to other parts of the world, letting people know the Savior is here. And today we are here because he did not give up. He did not give up on us. Even after being rejected all the way to the cross. And then at last they crucified him in rejection. But little did they know his crucifixion. They were provoking the power of God. Even to come in a bigger way that they have never seen. Like a flood. It swept them away. All of them. Even those who could not believe. When the darkness came. When the earth started shaking, when things started moving in the direction they cannot control, because what man wants to do with you ah, is to control you. Mm. The greatest mission of the devil and man is to control you. It gets to a place when the supernatural takes over, man has no control, can only obey and submit. Man dies for control. They want to control your life. They want to control your children. They want to control your marriage. They want to control everything about you. They want to control it. And be under your feet. But that's not where you belong. No. That's not where you belong. You are a child of God. You are a ruler. You are a leader. You are a high priest. You are, you are a here together with Jesus Christ, the Son of God. You are seated in heavenly places. The Bible says you don't belong here. You belong in the heaven. And I thank God for the man of God, Jeroge, who is teaching children that this is not their home. Heaven is their home because that is very true. We must see the big picture. Hear me today. God, and I pray, may the Lord open your eyes that you may start seeing the big picture. You are bigger, you are greater than the way you see yourself. You are the answer to many issues that the world is going through today. You are the answer to many problems that the world has today. Because Jesus, who is the overall answer, lives in you. And Jesus at this hour and at this time, he wants to use you so that you may become the answer. The world is looking for answers. And the answer is with you. Because Jesus lives in you. Don't let anybody look down on you. Don't let situation look down on you. Don't let circumstances destroy you. You destroy them. Amen. Yes. Bible says, God told Sherubabel, this mountain you see, you are going to do what? You are going to do what? You are going to destroy this mountain that you are seeing. You are going to eat it down and destroy it. I've given you the power to do it. And this work that is so big, you will put the last stone because I'm going to give you the ability. I'm going to give you the power to do it. It's not by your power. It's not by your might. It is by the Spirit of the Lord, says the Lord. Hallelujah. Those issues in your life, whether it's about your children, Bring them to God and never give up on God. Those issues in your life, whether it's your marriage, bring that marriage to God and never give up in God.